in the world. God created us to reflect, to represent, and to resemble his image in the earth, according to the Bible. We were created for that purpose. That is our highest absolute calling as individuals, to know him, to be known by him, and to walk in the earth in dominion and authority because of who the uncreated creator is and who he has created us to be. Initial disobedience, living apart from God, also called sin in the first man, Adam, separates us from that purpose and that calling. It creates a gap between God's intended purpose for us and how we tend to often rebel against living in harmony with that person. But God is love. God is merciful. God seeks and pursues us with a relentless pursuit. And that relentless pursuit is through the person of his son, Jesus Christ, who was God in the flesh, lived sinlessly, died for our sinful nature, so that by receiving his sacrificial death and receiving what he offers in abundant eternal life through faith, not works. We can't earn away our sinful nature. We can't do enough. We can't give enough. It is a gift to be believed and received individually. I can't do it for my kids. I can't do it for my grandkids. I can't do it for my wife. I have to acknowledge that God is almighty, all-knowing, all-powerful, all-loving, all-forgiving. And he's made a way for me to have right standing, for us to have right standing with him through faith in his son who died for our rebellious, sinful nature. The scriptures say if a person believes in his heart, or her heart, that Jesus Christ died for his or her sins and that the power of God raised him to new life by believing that and then receiving that God raised him from the dead. You can be made new. You can have the gap closed between a holy, loving God and our sinful nature through faith in Christ. And that can happen through a belief in your heart and a confession with your mouth. Not complicated. Easy. The journey won't be because there's a cost. It's called surrender. And that's daily. There's a one-time confession and receiving and praying, and then there's the process, the journey of sanctification. Let's pray. God, thank you for all that we've been able to see, to hear, to feel, to experience this morning in this place through these many of them your sons and daughters, in the world of basketball, as coaches, as coaches' spouses, as players, all in different places in their life's journey. Some are rejoicing and celebrating. Others are in painful, uncertain transitions, and you know it all, and you desire to bring good to all. But I pray now for those who may not know you, who have maybe heard of Jesus, who have maybe experienced your touch in some type of way or ways, but have yet to surrender, to acknowledge, to confess 
Jesus Christ as Lord. And for those whose hearts are, perhaps have been moved to want the gift of new life, also called the gift of salvation and eternal life. Here's a simple prayer that I offer to you and those who are within the hearing of my voice and whose hearts have been moved to want to pray with me. Please do so, God. You created me to know and to love you. But I'm a sinner. I've fallen short of the mark you've established for me because of a nature that is unsurrendered and rebellious. Yet, I acknowledge that Jesus Christ, your son, God in the flesh, died for my sins. And you rose him to life so that in him and through him, by believing in him, I can be made new and right with you. And that's my heart's desire, to yield myself to the Lordship of Christ. I want salvation through faith in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior now and for going forward. By the power of your word and your spirit, you promise to walk with me in a new and transformed life. Thank you for this gift. I receive it and turn away from my old ways and desire you by your word and your spirit to make me new and more like you. Amen.